on with this scene. The trick is called forced perspective. It was used to shrink the hobbits in The Lord of the Rings. Deceptive framing has also created false assumptions about the EU, some very dark and some comical. This is the story of how a mythical EU dragon was conjured up and the striking truth behind Headlines like these have been a reliable way for British newspapers to win attention. In 2015, the UN Human Rights Chief urged the UK to tackle tabloid hate speech after migrants were called cockroaches. The article in The Sun began, Show me pictures of coffins. Show me bodies floating in water. Play Like, Katie Hopkins is just a like straight-up white supremacist, which is pretty funny because... While Katie Hopkins is white, there is straight up nothing supreme about her. One of the funniest things is when you have like the ugliest of fucking humans be like, yes, yes, the whites, the whites. Katie Hopkins is a complete psychopath, complete psychopath, uh, famous for writing things like this. Rescue boats. I'd use gunships to stop migrants. No, I don't care. Show me pictures of coffins. Show me bodies floating in the water. Play violence and show me skinny people looking sad. I still don't care. This is how it feels to be a white conservative woman. I actually love this metaphor because it's a fake target and you put it there yourself. Exactly. Let's be serious. Hey, violins and show me skinny people looking sad. I still don't care. You referred to a plague of feral humans. I mean, are they all feral? I mean, is it actually a plague? It's this is the most like, by the way, this is centrism in British media, okay? Same as like, same as centrism in centrist in, in American media. Um, you said every migrant coming in from Libya deserves to be shot by a weapon. I mean, does every migrant really need to be shot? Maybe thirty percent, of course, but but perhaps not forty. Because you look at them and think you are nothing like me. You don't understand how our culture works. And these individuals from some of these cultures they come from are feral humans. The UN described a nasty. Un He's being sarcastic. The belly of racism. Ian Hislop is cool. Okay, my bad. He's the narrator guy from the Stanley Parable. And noted that Nazi media also referred to people as cockroaches, rats. Brexiteers sailed in on fears built up over decades. And it was all built on lies, too. Built on the foundation of fucking lies. Roving rapist Muslim gangs. Uh, that they were all like all the that like the government was hiding the truth about like Muslim immigration and that uh, you know they were doing a lot of crime or whatever or they were and and for some fucking weird reason they just like nobody considered this to be uh, uh, a, a real problem you know they use the word hordes they use the word cockroaches this campaign poster captures the deception the migrants aren't heading to Britain and have no way to reach it. The lone white face has been covered by the campaign slogan. When challenged, Nigel Farage felt no pressure to apologize. Your poster has been taken by many people as deeply offensive, upsetting, racist, anti-Muslim. Would you like to apologize to them tonight? Well, you know, I, I issued a very similar poster to that two months before uh, with very little debate. Uh, the problem with the poster wasn't the image. After all, it appeared on all of our front page newspapers. A leaflet played on the same fears with more subtle deception. It claims these countries are set to join the E. Huh. Hmm. I wonder why they were very upset about these countries uh, set to join the EU. EU. In reality, they have applied, but Turkey applied over 30 years ago and couldn't be further from joining. Syria and Iraq have not applied. They are shown for the fear factor. A second leaflet is less subtle. Turkey and Iraq are almost the same color. The arrow, part of the visual language of invasion, includes all the colors of the region. Let's move the camera for a clearer view. This is what the NHS spends by age group. Add education and pensions, and we have half of all government spending. 
These are the demographics of immigration. For the record, Turkey will never join the European Union. And the reason Turkey will never join the European Union is because of that. 90 million Muslims is not 76. Turkey's population is like near 90 million. That's not happening. European Union would never allow 90 million Muslims, especially a much younger population too, to join the European Union. That would just never happen. Immigrants. They are exactly what Britain needs to support its aging population. There is overwhelming consensus among economists that immigration is good for Britain's economy. Studies show they boost public finances because they pay more in indirect taxes and make much less use of benefits and public services. What do they know? What do they know of the impact of immigration on school places and hospital waiting lists? In fact, immigrants pay for more places than they use. European migrants made a positive net contribution of £20 billion to UK public finances between 2000 and 2011. That's enough to pay for an extra 80 million GP visits per year. Immigrants also reduce waiting lists by easing the NHS's recruitment crisis. This year, the NHS has 3,000 fewer EEA nurses and 4,000 doctors are considering leaving the UK. Here's the second graph. It shows that most Leave voters live in areas with very few immigrants. Nine of the ten districts with the highest Leave vote had low immigration. Lambeth in London, which recorded the highest Remain vote of 78%, saw a net annual influx of 4,598 immigrants, while Castle Point in Essex saw only 81 new immigrants. But 72% of people there voted leave. At first, this might seem surprising, but it's a well-established trend that when we meet immigrants, we lose our fear of them. The illusion is broken. The U Marxist Paul critique of the EU from a leftist perspective? Yes, the European Union is a fucking neoliberal organization. But the reason why I'm on board with like a Yanis Varoufakis style approach, uh, progressive international style approach to the EU is because I understand the need for coalition, okay? A need for like a, a legitimate coalition, even if the institution itself is personally an arm of the neoliberal capitalist establishment. It is. It's true. I, I get it. UK media is the least trusted in Europe by some margin. Perhaps even more readers need to recognize the deception before things improve. The Leave campaign also drove fear of losing democratic control. We cannot hope to govern an independent nation. We cannot hope to have an independent democracy in this country as long as we are members of the EU. Since 1999, the UK has voted in favour of EU laws 95% of the time and against only 2%. In search of an example of losing control to the EU, Boris suggested that the EU banned odd-shaped bananas, a myth debunked over 20 years ago. It's always the dumbest shit. Like, the dumbest fucking shit. Condom. Uh, condoms, bananas, like, this is, we're losing our sovereignty, Boris. We're losing our fucking passports. We're losing our sovereignty, Boris. Do, f do something. Do something. You cannot, you cannot yes. tell bananas with <laughs> abnormal curvature of the fingers. Other comical myths hardly need debunking. In his <laughs> you wants to merge UK with France. His resignation letter, Boris pointed to a more a serious pee. example. Jacob's father was the editor of the Times. In his own words, he was effectively born into the establishment. He is for fox hunting, against abortion under any circumstances, and personally delivered a Daily Express petition against foreign aid. Dude, the best. I mean, straight up. But the message resonated with people who had suffered years of income stagnation while the rich had grown richer. The Leave campaign blamed this on immigration, 
But studies show immigration does not deflate wages, and the real causes are well established. The 2008 financial crisis and government policies criticised by the UN as failing to promote social mobility. People without degrees, perhaps feeling trapped at the wrong end of income inequality, were far more likely to vote leave. Central London is the EU's richest region, and yet 30% of UK children live in poverty. A hundred thousand more have fallen below the poverty line in 12 months. Boris and co seem unlikely candidates to deviate from this path. Projecting a fight against the establishment allowed the Leave campaign to brush research, data and expert advice under the carpet. What economics body is there that, that they should believe? All the ones, all the ones that are part of the uh, sort of institutional infrastructure of big government, be suspicious of. I think the people in this country have had enough of experts with uh, organisations from acronyms. The people of this saying, country have had saying, enough of experts. With, 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 from organisations with In a poll of top... Brilliant, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, bravo. ...economists, 80% agreed that people in the UK would be poorer as a result of Brexit. Only 2% disagreed. Here's why there's such a consensus. Putting up trade barriers is bad for your economy. The withdrawal from the EU is a form of putting up trade barriers. Full stop. You are ruining your... I think the funniest part about Brexit was that, like, as I mentioned already, all of the reasons why the Conservatives wanted to leave the EU were completely unfounded. With the exception of immigration, okay, which did genuinely screw over the, the um, I mean, it, it did genuinely screw over a lot of the people who ironically were like business owners and whatnot with like tariffs and shit, but like with, with, with respect to like they're losing their sovereignty or whatever, their deal was already a very specific one with so much, uh, with so many carve outs uh, for, for the English, for, for Britland in general. So all it did was truly make it harder for them to then uh, individually go back and, and make similar trade agreements. Which is hilarious. I take economics and I can confirm it's literally not real. I live in kind of a poor area of the UK yet my economics teachers still push Tory ass ideas. Of course economic, econ professors do that. Like, the anti-capitalist reason for wanting to leave the European Union is, is, uh, is one that revolves around wanting to maintain your own labor conditions and wanting to, wanting to have autonomy over, like, what kind of labor protections you can offer if push comes to shove and the European Union tries to, uh, you know, stop that from happening. Yet... Ultimately, the Tories are not going to do that anyway. Because to a conservative, the only way to improve labor conditions is by not offering more rights to the workers, as you are seeing currently with the fucking railway strike, but instead by limiting immigration. And that's not how you fucking... That's not how you, you improve labor conditions. You don't improve labor conditions by, by uh, cutting off immigration if... The capital-owning class is already dominating the way that labor conditions are seen in the country, the way that labor is treated in the country. Your competitiveness specifically with your largest trading partner. It is a fact of life. It's one of the few things in economics we can talk about as a fact of life. The gravity applies. The UK trades more with Ireland than with China. Yet Jacob Rees-Mogg says a no-deal Brexit would boost the economy by 1.1 trillion pounds. Trump has, of course, employed a similar trick, branding the whole mainstream media as fake and projecting his own alternative facts. Perhaps the Leave campaign's greatest... Dude, my favorite. Yeah, see? I've heard this so many times. Train drivers already get paid 60k a year to sit in a chair and press buttons. Yeah, bro. You want to know why? Because they have strong fucking unions, you absolute idiot. 
and because they demonstrate their power and their importance to the the center of uh, to to centers of power, capital owners regularly. And the railway union isn't the train drivers currently that are on strike. But it doesn't matter. They have gone on strike before, as I've talked about this before. And I've heard this exact line, this line of attack against them. Trick ...after dishonestly sowing and stoking so much groundless fear themselves was to steal from that cheap Trump playbook and accuse Remainers of being guilty of their crimes. Just as Trump, the master creator of false facts, shouts fake news at whatever goes against his agenda, so the Brexiteers, the arch instigators of electoral fear themselves, routinely labeled all the warnings from experts Project Fear. Expert warnings which have come starkly true throughout this shambles of a negotiation period. Project Fear. Project Fear. Project Fear. The truth is beginning to outshine the mythical dragon of the EU. Polls show that most people would now rather remain in Europe, and there is increasing support for a vote on the final deal, something Jacob rees mogg once supported. And you could have two referendums, and as it happens, it may be more sense to have the second referendum after the renegotiation is completed. Should the will of the people change when they have clearly put their deal before them, would he respect that will of the people? If in 30 years' time the UK wants to rejoin, that would be a matter for the electorate then. But this result must be respected and it must be implemented. Perhaps in a final... Yeah, no, my favorite one is the Brexit eel here. This for is a great... For years, Peter has exported glass eels from his base in Gloucester. This is so good. It's so good. All his customers are in the EU, from Germany to Holland, Sweden to Greece. This fucking idiot. Which Remember this fucking idiot? Until the transition period ends, he can feel his business slipping away. We will produce the documentation, but unfortunately, our customers have also got a raft of documentation to produce to allow the import to go ahead. So, why buy from the UK? Not my why fucking it? jelly deals, bruv. Buy from another producer. Our main cultural export. The door, no documentation, no problems. You voted for Brexit. How are you feeling about that now? I think. <laughs> be careful what you wish for. That's, yes, I thought we were going to get a global market. This is going to be a new opportunity, but it hasn't turned out like this. I would have never have voted for Brexit if I knew we were going to lose our job. Peter's business turns over around two million pounds a year and employs around 10 staff. Three times. I thought that we were to get the fucking pals eating our jelly deals. I didn't realize that this meant tariffs for no fucking reason, bruv. I didn't fucking realize. A week, this company transports these baby More paperwork. Across the EU. The fear for Peter and his staff is that if there's any extra paperwork for his customers because of this Brexit deal, it could make transporting these eels uncompetitive. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's how fucking stupid are you that your main job is exports and you literally voted for leaving uh, uh, the EU. Like, that's just your it's like if you're an expat living in like Italy or some shit and you're like, yeah, breaks it, me, breaks it, bro. It's like, yeah, you're fucked now. Good job. Final vote. Facts would start to overcome fears. Wouldn't that be a win for informed democracy? Unacceptable. Unfucking acceptable.